what sounds like fiction but is actually a real historical event. Edgar Allan Poe wrote a novel in 1838 in which four shipwrecked survivors, at the point of starvation, choose to resort to cannibalism. So they kill the young cabin boy, Richard Parker, and eat him. In 1884, a ship called the Mignonette sank. Four crew members survived. At the point of starvation, they killed and ate the youngest of them, Richard Parker. The escape from Antarctica by the members of the Antarctic expedition led by Ernest Shackleton. The stuff they went through was unbelievable. Their boat, the Endurance was crushed by ice flows. They were stranded on the flows for over a year in temperatures well below freezing. They then took to three boats around 22 feet in length across the Antarctic Ocean looking for land. There were about 10 men in each boat. They missed reaching land by just a few miles at times. Two-thirds of them got stranded on Elephant Island surrounded by ice while one of the boats went out in search of rescue. That boat made it through the Drake Passage, one of the deadliest places in the ocean. All but three of them got stranded with little food and water while the three men who left became the first people to cross South Georgia on foot. They found civilization. Rescued the men who came through the Drake Passage. Waited months until they could rescue those on Elephant Island. Every single person who came on the initial voyage survived with the worst lasting consequence being a single foot amputation. An English king named Ethelred, later called the Unready, took some troops to defend against a Viking invasion. The weather was bad, so a lot of the Viking ships crashed as they were landing. Ethelred thought that it would be dishonorable to attack them as they were stumbling onto shore, so he kept his troops back until the Vikings had a chance to get together and form proper battle lines before he attacked them. The better prepared Vikings then won the fight and slaughtered a bunch of Ethelred's men and he and the rest were forced to run away while the Vikings went around pillaging. Jean de Clisson, 1300-1359, was married to a French nobleman who was beheaded for treason by the French king. Enraged, she sold their estate and purchased three black warships with red sails, and became a pirate queen of the English Channel who targeted French ships. She became known as the Lioness of Brittany and in her 13 years of piracy she would slaughter every member of a ship's crew except for one so that last survivor could go back and tell the French king what had happened. In 2007 a paraglider got trapped in the updraft of two joining thunderstorms and was lifted to an altitude of 33,000 feet. She landed over three hours later about 60 kilometers north of her starting position having survived extreme cold, lightning and lack of oxygen. The death of Ken Rex McElroy. He terrorized Skidmore, Missouri for decades. Stalking, assaulting, murdering and assaulting two 14-year-olds who were his wives. He had an expensive attorney so he was never charged. The law never helped the poor town. One day, the town gathered for a meeting on how to deal with McElroy. Details get a little vague here, but apparently someone alerted the room that McElroy was in the bar up the street. Quietly and calmly, everyone got up and walked over to the bar. As McElroy got into his truck, someone shot him in the back of the head. The town just went back to their business. When the witnesses, like the entire town, were questioned, everyone claimed they didn't see anything. No one has ever been arrested. Sergeant Stubby. During World War I, a soldier found a stray dog when training on the Yale University campus, and took a liking to him. The soldier snuck the dog onto the ship when he had to leave campus and when the dog was found by the commanding officer, he was allowed to stay because he had learned how to salute. Stubby was injured a few times during the war, but he was useful with alerting his squad of surprise mustard gas attacks and gunshots before the human ear could detect the sound. He also found and comforted wounded soldiers and caught a German soldier by the leg of his pants until American soldiers got to him. In 1971. A teenage girl named Julianne Kopke was on a plane that was struck by lightning and disintegrated in the air. She plummeted 3,000 meters strapped to her seat, and landed in the Amazon rainforest. Her mom had been on the flight with her, and Julianne searched in vain for her mom, but Julianne was the sole survivor of the crash. She survived 11 days alone, treating her maggot-infested wounds with fuel and using tracking techniques her father had taught her, before she found a boat that she used to make her way back to civilization. What an absolute legend! Timothy Dexter was frequently given terrible business advice that would somehow through a stroke of luck pay off. He sold coal to Newcastle and made a profit. He became insanely wealthy, dressed in a strange manner, 
and acted weird in the company of the incredibly wealthy elite he had accidentally stumbled into. He spent a lot of time basically gaslighting his own wife for his own amusement. For quite some time he acted as if she had died and was a ghost, even introducing her to other people as his wife's ghost. He at one point even faked his own death so he could see how people would react at his funeral. He also wrote a book that was a long-winded rant about everything that upset him. The book included no punctuation. He made a second edition with several pages of punctuation attached to the end that the reader could distribute as they saw fit. Basically a real-life shitpost. Spartan Weddings Basically, young Spartans would train for years in camps, surrounded only by men. So, when the time came for marriage, the women would shave their heads and dress in men's clothing, since the idea of having sex with anyone other than a man weirded out the grooms. The Entire Life of Julie D'Aubigny Bisexual swordmaster, heartthrob turned opera singer who lived her life entirely for her own. Beat the shit out of dudes in sore duels, and doing it topless whenever anyone doubted she was a lady. Got in trouble for making out with ladies at royal balls. Once became a nun to duck a nun and then set fire to the convent. Shit is so wild, it's insane there's not a blockbuster movie about her. In the Middle Ages gays and lesbians would become nuns and monks to avoid persecution, and since religion was a heavy influence in those days it was seen as noble that they were dedicating themselves to God, they would have special friends and since no one could get pregnant it wasn't that big of an issue. Wojtek was a bear who fought Nazis in return for cigarettes and beer. He didn't die until 20 years after World War II. My favorite part about that story is that after the war he lived in a zoo. It was common for soldiers from the bear's company to come visit and simply jump into the enclosure to play with him, much to the zookeeper's annoyance. A baboon was employed to change rail signals. After initial skepticism, the railway decided to officially employ Jack once his job competency was verified. The baboon was paid 20 cents a day, and a half bottle of beer each week. It is widely reported that in his nine years of employment with the railroad, Jack never made a mistake. Joshua Norton was just this random crazy guy from San Francisco who hated all this political nonsense that was going on at the time and figured he could do the job better at it himself, and thus the Emperor of the United States and Protector of Mexico was born. While he held no real power, the people liked him so much that they treated him like royalty anyways. Any currency issued under his name was treated like real money at many establishments. One day, he was arrested by a private security force because of his mental health which enraged practically all of San Francisco. The police chief let him go because he had committed no crime, and Norton gave an imperial pardon to the guy who arrested him. After this incident, any police officer Norton passed would salute him. Another time, when a riot had formed and was getting pretty violent, Norton simply stood in front of the mob and calmly prayed, which managed to disperse the mob. And that's not even a fraction of the crazy stuff that he did. During World War I the German Navy built a ship and painted it to make it look like a British ship called the RMS Carmania in order to infiltrate and destroy British convoys. On the ship's first outing, the first enemy it encountered was the real RMS Carmania, which promptly sunk it. In 1985 Philadelphia police bombed a residential neighborhood. The resulting explosion destroyed two city blocks, killing five children and six adults. I watched that fire from my house just outside of West Philly. I'm shocked at home many people have no knowledge of the fifth largest city dropping a bomb on itself that resulted in the deaths of 11 citizens and the destruction of 61 houses. The Tamam Shoot Case Shortly after World War II, a well-groomed, athletic man was found dead on an Australian beach. There's no apparent cause of death. It is impossible to identify the man. Some mysterious clues are found. Among them, a book with a cryptic message written into it. Later, they bury his corpse compassionately. Even later, it turns out that he might have been searching for a child he possibly fathered some years ago. And that the mother possibly had been a spy, who had fallen in love with a spy from abroad, the unidentified man, who might have fathered said child with her, back then. As he realized that the mother wouldn't be meeting him anymore, he would have poisoned himself on the beach. And since he was a spy, he used a poison that doesn't leave a trace. Thanks for tuning in to Reddit Streams. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos. Share your views in the comments below.